I'm Tim, and welcome to Watching One. Thanks for logging on. If you want to dive deeper, the Breitling Avenger Seawolf 3000 meter might be just the watch you want. Technically reference E17337, this watch's calling card is its depth rating. Now manufactured from 2003 to 2008, this one here was retailed in 2005. It was one of the deepest diving, most durable, rugged, and ambitious Breitling technical projects ever undertaken by the Solothurn Company. 44 millimeters titanium. It is, in a lot of ways, a watch that wears with a ton of presence, but not nearly as much mass on the wrist as its depth rating and its sheer dimensions would suggest. Now, it is 18 and a half millimeters thick, so that's something to think about if you have any intention of wearing this watch with a long sleeve or a dress cuff. I would say, unless you're talking about a large winter coat or a very loose sweater of some kind, it's probably not going to fit under a long sleeve, and dress cuffs are probably a no-no. But with a watch this bold, this rugged, the intended use is anything but desk diving. Consider that this watch, with a 3,000 meter, that's 10,000 foot depth rating, required early finite element analysis by Breitling, some of the first ever performed by the company on a watch case in order to determine weak points in the case during development. 10,000 feet is incredibly ambitious, and we take it for granted in the era of extreme dive watches seemingly rated to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, but back in 2003 for Breitling, to put a 3,000 meter rating on this watch was an incredibly ambitious technological and practical undertaking. And they pulled it off beautifully because although the watch is thick, it wears light on the wrist. It doesn't feel like a bulky, impractical novelty instrument. It feels like an everyday sports watch. Now my wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. So I just want to emphasize to those of you out there that although 44 millimeters, I would say the watch actually wears more like a 42. It definitely wears smaller than a 42 millimeter Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore for that matter, and it's a world removed from the bulk of the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller. Again, in titanium with a matching titanium professional bracelet, this one really wears quite light, distributes its mass quite nicely. Although the crown guard and the crown are large standout features and easy to grip as a result, they have no tendency to dig the wrist. I mean, I can't even create an angle whereby the thing would even apply pressure to my skin. So Breitling did its homework both in terms of the finite element analysis for water pressure points on the case and physical pressure points between the case and the wrist. Very comfortable watch. I want to call out the lugs because I feel like they're particularly elegant on a dive watch of this nature. Although a hardcore piece, the flow of the lugs, which are tapered in two directions, there's this longitudinal taper, and then there's actually this lateral taper where they actually tumble off to each side. And I feel that works really well with the directional brushed finish of the watch. This is a little bit subdued in two respects. First and foremost, because all surfaces are brushed. There is no polish on this watch. It's low profile, figuratively speaking. Although quite thick, the watch doesn't jump out because it doesn't really reflect light. Now, it has an anti-reflective coating on the crystal itself. So again, subdued but legible. And within the dial, you can see Arabic numerals, high contrast, white against a beautiful matte blue base. And that really stands out. This watch has gorgeous dial composition. The only potential flaw I can see is the huge amount of text at 6 o'clock. Chronometer, official certify, automatic, 3,000 meters, 10,000 feet. Not strictly necessary, but I guess the company might have felt it was necessary to balance out the Breitling Marquee Company and founding date at 12 o'clock. It's certainly balanced. It might be a little bit busy, but it's not offensive. Now, what this dial is, is phenomenally functional. I can read every calibration from the 0 to 100 chapter ring to all 12 Arabic numerals. I can read the date, the hands are standout, and the seconds hand with the luminous tip and the red shock, they all jump out. The watch is highly visible at night too with beautiful loom that makes it a treat to use in the dark. And just to round out the design of this watch, let's talk a little bit about the bezel, which incorporates the traditional Avenger features. Now, the Avenger in the modern era has really taken the writer tabs to the nth degree. They're well pronounced here, and they add a lot of definition to the bezel. A lot of times, it's just a halo around the dial on some watches. Here, it's remarkably pronounced with raised figures with wells of calibration that are etched into the bezel with the signature bezel bolts that you see on Breitlings to retain the bezel. 
physically to the case and hold it secure, not a snap-on piece. When we disassemble these for refinishing and repairs, we actually have to remove these bolts to take the bezel off. That's how secure, securely these watches are made. And don't be deceived by that crystal. It seems to sit low, but it's part of the reason this watch is so burly top to bottom. Five millimeters thick, it's a robust piece, not just against the depths of the ocean, but against the kind of slings and arrows and knocks that a sports watch basically indoors in the real world of doorknobs, sheetrock, and seatbelt buckles. Taking the watch off the wrist, you can see that the watch features a very supple, beautifully tapered professional bracelet. Now it feels very burly. When you collapse it, it closes with a satisfying snick. And the bottom line, hear that beautiful satisfying snick? The bottom line is that it also adds some versatility for those who live in colder climes. Even if you never go diving with the watch, the ability to deploy this diving clasp and fit it over a sweater or a winter coat is a godsend. Again, if you have the kind of winters like I used to have in college in New Hampshire or like they just had in the Northeast this year, having that ability to keep your watch visible when the rest of you is bundled up, again, even if you never wear a dive suit, this thing will find use. Very practical, a great value-adding feature. And the fact that it's all integrated into a rock-solid titanium bracelet means that there's no mass penalty to be paid for the substance or the feature set of this bracelet and clasp. Now, the movement is the Breitling's tried-and-true caliber 17. Based on the ETA 2824, it's a chronometer-grade movement. It does have a stop-seconds feature so that if you pull the crown, you can stop the movement entirely. You can stop the seconds hand. You can synchronize it precisely to an accurate known reference time like an accurate quartz watch or an atomic clock. I feel that any watch that's chronometer certified, and this one is, should have the ability to be set precisely because what's the advantage of negative four plus six per 24 hours if you can't synchronize the watch to the second to begin with? Breitling, to their credit, has chronometer certified every movement, quartz and mechanical, since 2000. And this watch, obviously, is a case of that, but well done. Now. The movement itself is automatic bulletproof. I like to sing the praises of the ETA 2892, which is the thinner, finer automatic winding movement from ETA. Uh, of course, having crashed one of those on a bicycle, I can testify as to its strength. And the remarkable thing about the 2824 in this watch is that it's even tougher, thicker, more robust. It's every inch the equal of the case itself. If you were to pick just one automatic winding chronometer grade movement, to accompany a watch like this, you can't really do any better than the 2A24. It's a ticking tank. Now, this watch is 100% complete with all of its original Breitling factory accessories, everything. The boxes, the manuals, the documents of provenance, the accessories. You get it all when you buy this Breitling Avenger Seawolf 3000 meters reference E17337 from Watch You Want. So if you're looking for a do-it-all dive watch, a rugged everyday weekend warrior, a daily driver maybe to give your Patek Philippe's and Vacheron's a break, I have a feeling this Breitling Avenger Seawolf 3000 meter 44 millimeter titanium dive watch just may be the watch you want.